In today's card tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make this really fun and easy interactive card using Lawn Fawn's Flippin' Awesome Die and Yeti or Not stamp set. Hi everyone and welcome back. This is Mindy Egan. Here's a quick look at the card that we'll be making today and how it can move so easy with this adorable little scene. So I am starting out by stamping and coloring my images. I stamped these images from the Yeti or Not stamp set from Lawn Fawn, and I stamped them on white cardstock using the jet black ink, which is Copic friendly, and I'm using my Copic markers to color them in. Now I'm using a dot technique on the Yeti, and all that is is just adding dots instead of fully coloring the image in. This will make it appear as it is white. For the colors, I used N4 and I'm sorry, N5, N4, and N2. For the face, I used B97, B95, and 91. For the gloves, I used YG21, YG25, and YG17. And for the horns, I did just a little bit of W4 and W2. For the scarf, I did R24, R22, and R21. And for the ski mask, I'm going to use the N5, N4, and N2 combination. And then for the cover of the face, or the, the plastic or the glass that goes over the eyes, I shouldn't say glass, more of a plastic, I'm going to use B0000 and B01. And for the trees, I'm using the same colors as I did for the gloves. I will have all of these colors listed on my blog, so you can always refer to that to write these down. I'll use those same colors throughout all of these images, because I did have to stamp them numerous times to create my scene. And same thing with the ski here. I'm using the B97 and 91. Then I'm going to use the coordinating dies from the stamp set. And you'll see I'll have to cut, cut these out a couple of times to get all of the images. And I'm going to hold those in place with some low-tech tape and run this through my die cut machine. Now you can see that top Yeti up there, I only colored the feet because that's going to be the one where his feet are sticking out of the snowbank, so I didn't have to color the full image. To create my wintry background, I'm using Bristol Smooth cardstock and I'm starting off with Peacock Feathers Distress Oxide Ink. I am using the Tailored Expressions uh, blending brushes. I'm coming in with Wilted Violet and then I'll finish off the top with a Blueprint Sketch and I do go back and forth between all of these colors to have a really nice seamless blend throughout them. Once I was finished blending, I actually had run this through my die cut machine with a stitched cloud backdrop die. Uh, I actually would totally skip that step if you were going to be recreating the scene because after I added my splatters with water, you couldn't even hardly see the clouds. So I just wanted to point that out. This step, I would to or the clouds, I would totally have skipped. So what I did here is I just spritzed that with water and picked that up with a paper towel so I have these beautiful white splatters in the background which look like snow. And see those clouds kind of disappeared after the splatters were there. So next I'm going to create a hillside for my background. This is the stitched hillside die from Lawn Fawn. Just kind of figuring out exactly where I want or how high I want my hills to be. And I die cut that from some pixie dust cardstock. Now my background I did already go ahead and trim down. I'm using Sugar Plum cardstock as my base. So that's four and a quarter by five and a half. I have a piece of white cardstock there and then my main scene on top of that. So I have three layers to my card. Now for my actual flip portion, I die cut four squares from white cardstock. These are actually the smallest square from the Flippin' Awesome die, and I'm going to ink blend all of these to match my background. So I'm gonna create all of them the same way, starting off with the Peacock Feathers, then coming in with the Wilted Violet, and then the Blueprint Sketch. I waited to ink blend uh, 
after I die cut these squares because I just thought that was easier to get all of those colors in the exact areas that I had wanted. But that's totally your choice if you'd rather ink blend first and then die cut them. But they are a smaller area, so I just thought this was easiest. Then the same as my background, I spritzed those with water and dabbed that up with a paper towel. Continuing on with my scene, I did go ahead and die cut out that stitched hillside two more times from the Pixie Dust cardstock, so it's a real beautiful glittery snow I'll have. And I used that small square die again, just like I had here for my ink blended panel. And I die cut that four times, so these are all going to layer on the bottom of my panels. This is for the flip book. So just using some tape runner, I'm going to adhere these all down to the bottom portion of my panels for my flip book. And then using white cardstock, I die cut out the flippin' awesome dies. So this is the main piece of our flip book that we have. I'm trying to show you the score lines here. There are a few score lines. And what you'll need to do is fold along all of those lines. So to start out with, I go through and flip them all one way. So just folding. And then I use the bone folder to crease that down and really get a, get a nice crease on them. This is just going to help make it easier when you're pulling your interactive piece. And then going back through, folding those the other direction and creasing those as well. You also want to make sure you crease those two tabs that are off on the side. This is what's going to attach our uh, flippin' awesome element to our card front. So once those are all nice and creased, I'm going to start attaching my panels. Now these are the larger squares that come on the Flippin' Awesome die. I'm going to attach my smaller panels to those. So here I already went ahead and attached my Yetis to create my scene. And I apologize, I did do that off camera. I thought I hit the record button. But you can see here, I just had arranged all of them, attaching the face masks and the scarf. So he looked the same throughout all of my pictures, but he's just kind of tipping over. He's skiing up a hill and he just kind of loses control and tips into a snowbank, which I thought was just so super cute. So now I'm going to take just some tape runner for my first panel. Now this is the last part of the scene. I like to lay my scene out on top there, you can see, so I know which one is going to go next. This is the last one in my flip book. So this is where he tipped over into the snowbank. I just used tape runner to attach that down to that end panel. Then I love using the double-sided tape from Lawn Fawn to attach anything that is kind of going to be moving. This just has a really strong hold, and I'm attaching that double-sided tape in between the score lines. I'm also going to add it to the tabs that are in the back. So once those are on there, I'll go ahead and start removing the backing to that double-sided tape. I'm going to take the left-hand side and kind of prop that up a little bit. Then I'm going to take my picture image and just push that flush up against that left hand side. That just helps ensure that everything is really straight and even and flush to the edges right up to that score line. Same thing with my next one in my scene. Making sure that that's flush against the side right at that score line. So we're only attaching it right where that double sided tape is. One more time up flush against the edge and then I can fold that larger flap over, crease that down a little bit more, and our picture book is starting to form. Now one thing I did here is I just took some sugar plum cardstock, added a little bit of the liquid adhesive, and added that to the tab. That matches my card base and also makes it kind of stand out a little bit more so the recipient knows to pull that. For the sentiment, I'm using this flag banner that's on the Flippin' Awesome die. I die cut that from some white cardstock. And then I'm going to be using Juice Box and Merman ink. Now this is a sentiment off of the Winter Wavy Sayings stamp set. And just adding both of those colors to my sentiment. So I kind of combined it like an ombre effect. And just using a clear acrylic block, I stamped that down onto my banner. Now I want to attach my sentiment first to my cardstock so I know how much room I have and I wanted to make sure I left room for that sentiment. 
so I just used some white foam squares to attach that. And now to attach our flippin' awesome book. All we're gonna do is making sure that those tabs are hugging around that panel, remove the backing of our double-sided adhesive, and I'm actually bringing in some Lawn Fawn liquid glue just to ensure that this stays, especially on that glitter cardstock. So once I have that centered on my panel, I'm gonna actually hold this down for a little while, and you could set it off on the side with something heavy on top just to ensure that it's going to stick really well. Now one more piece I almost forgot is an exclamation point with that speech bubble. So this is the Llama Tell You stamp set with the speech bubble. The exclamation point comes off of the Yeti or Not stamp set. And then I can ju just use that coordinating die to die cut that out and add that to my Yeti, which I thought was so fun and adorable. So now we'll take a look at everything in action. You just pull that tab on the side and there is our flippin' awesome little flip book. I love the scene that you can create with these. You can do any type of images on here. I think the Yeti was just so super adorable and perfect for this. I hope you enjoyed today's card tutorial. Be sure to hit the like button if you did enjoy it and you're welcome to share with your friends if you think they'd be interested. If you'd like to see more videos from me, please be sure to hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon to be notified of any future videos. Thank you for stopping by and I'll see you next time.